Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, leçon M. And in this lesson we'll work on les pronoms relatifs. So pronounce, um, one more time, yes, because we, we've got quite many pronouns in French and we use them quite often, okay, but in that case we're going to work on les pronoms relatifs and we'll see first qui, then que, after that, don, and finally, où. Okay, so the first one that will work with will be qui. Okay, so pronouns, as usual, are these little words that you use to avoid repetition if something was already said, or if you want to, in one sentence, combine two different sentences. Okay, so the first one, qui, normally we use it because it's subject, okay? So it can be whether for a person or a thing, pour une personne ou une chose, okay? And then the first examples that we saw, we'll see, sorry, will be for une personne, okay? So, qui? So if we take this example, the first one, first sentence, nous connaissons un homme. Okay, connaître is to know. Nous connaissons un homme. And then we've got the second sentence. Cet homme travaille dans un restaurant. Okay, so it's totally possible to have these two sentences like that. Okay, but then if you look carefully, we repeat cet homme or un homme. Okay, we've got here cet homme. Okay, and it's here in the first sentence as well. Let's imagine that we would like to combine these two sentences, make one and just avoid repeating here, un homme or cet homme. In that case, well, we will use this pronoun relatif, okay? We will use this qui just because if you look carefully in the second sentence here, cet homme travaille dans un restaurant, well, Cet homme here is subject of the verb. And that's the reason why we'll use qui. Okay? So it could be a person, like in that example, okay? Cet homme, but it could be also an object or a thing. Okay? So the sentence you will get will be this one. Nous connaissons un homme qui, and that's where you put your pronom relatif, Travail dans un restaurant. Okay? So it is quite easy to make. It's not that difficult. You just need to remember that it should come well before the verb here. All right? And then we've been choosing this key just because it is the subject of the verb. All right? So let's see now the same sentence. Nous connaissons un homme. But then here, if you look, cet homme a travaillé dans un restaurant. So here we've got the passé composé form here, you remember. You put avoir first and then you put here your pa participe passé form. All right. So of course, cet homme, we would like to avoid repeating this one. So we'll get this sentence. Nous connaissons un homme qui a travaillé dans un restaurant. So, basically, it is quite simple because uh, it doesn't change that much. You only need to use, again, one more time, this pronoun relatif qui, okay, before the verb. So, keep in mind that even if you've got two forms here, it's only one verb, okay? It's composed. You've got first avoir and then participe présent, uh, sorry, participe passé. But still, it's only one verb here. So, that's the reason why qui should come before, Okay? And then, we'll see a third example. Nous connaissons un homme. Cet homme va travailler dans un restaurant. Okay? So in that case, what do we have here? We've got a second sentence in which we've got this is going to work. Okay? So va, it's aller. Okay? So that's what we call futur proche. Okay? So... This man, cet homme, is going to work, va travailler, all right? So, of course, same thing here. We don't want to repeat cet homme or un homme, okay? So, we will get this. Nous connaissons un homme 
qui va travailler dans un restaurant. All right, so just before the verbs here. All right, so it's quite simple. Okay, let's see now if we replace une chose, a thing, okay, with qui. So, je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge, okay, regardez to watch, une voiture, a car, je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge. So, of course, in that case, we would like to avoid the repetition of une voiture, okay, and then, je regarde une voiture, qui est rouge. All right. So, je regarde une voiture qui est rouge. So, exactly the same thing here. You just put this qui, and then you get the verb after, after that, est rouge. All right. Let's see the same sentence, but then let's put here the uh, passé composé. J'ai regardé une voiture. Cette voiture était imparfait rouge. Okay. J'ai regardé une voiture. Cette voiture était rouge. So, same thing here, we don't want to repeat voiture, then we will get the simple sentence, j'ai regardé une voiture qui était rouge. So, just before the verb. Let's put that at the future. So, je vais regarder une voiture, so I am going to watch une voiture, okay? Cette voiture sera, so here you get the real future, what we call future simple, okay, is, so it's uh, will be, uh, sera rouge. Exactly the same thing, we don't want to repeat une voiture, so, je vais regarder une voiture qui sera rouge. Alright, so it's really simple, you should keep in mind that first, first thing, well, of course you get to spot the, the, the word you want to replace, and If it is subject like we have here, then you should put qui. So whether it's a person or an object or a thing, so it will be qui, just because it's the subject of the sentence, okay? And you have to put it here before the verb, okay? Now we'll have a look at que, okay? So que, you should remember that it will replace what we call complément d'objet direct. So, complément, it's because it will complete the sentence. Objet, because it's what we call grammatical object. Okay? And then, direct, just because we don't use or we won't use any preposition between the verb and this grammatical object. Okay? And then, normally, we tend to write it shortly, C-O-D. Okay, so if you see this COD written somewhere, it's just because we want to say complément d'objet direct. Okay, and then the same thing will work first with the person, so example with persons, and then chose, things, and then let's start now. So que, c'est l'acteur, tu admires cet acteur. Okay, so in that case, of course, if we look carefully, we would like to avoid repeating acteur, because it's in the first sentence and then it is in the second sentence as well. But if you have a look here, in the second sentence, you get tu, okay, so it's the subject. Then you get admire, so it's the verb admire, to admire, all right. And after that, you've got cet acteur, so the thing we would like to replace, okay. And then if we look carefully, so What we saw is that cet acteur is, well, first it's a complement, okay? It will complete the, the, the subject and the verb. Then it is what we call grammatical objects, and if you look carefully between admirer and cet acteur, we don't have anything, so we don't have any preposition. So it does mean that it is direct, direct, okay? In that case, we should use que, all right? So let's look at... The sentence now, c'est l'acteur que tu admires. All right, so you first put back your first sentence here, c'est l'acteur, then you put this pronom relatif que, and then the sentence continues, tu admires, subject, verb. Okay, now let's have a look at the same thing, but... At the feminine, c'est l'actrice, tu admires cette actrice. Okay, so 
exactly the same sentence, but it's the feminine form. C'est l'actrice, tu admires cette actrice, ok? We don't want to repeat actrice, obviously. Then we get, c'est l'actrice que tu admires. All right? So, same concept, same structure, no problem. So, let's see now with une chose, a thing, ok? C'est la voiture, tu adores cette voiture. Ok, and then obviously we don't want to repeat la voiture, ok, adorer, to adore, tu adores cette voiture, c'est la voiture que tu adores. Alright, so same concept, you first put que here, then subject verb. Ok, be careful, and be careful at the passé composé form. Why? Well, look. Normally, when we construct a sentence, we first start with the sujet. Then, we've got the verb. Then, we've got so what we saw, complément d'objet direct. Okay? And normally, when we introduce the passé composé form, we say that if we use avoir, normally you don't have to put anything at the end of your participe passé form, so you don't need to mark the feminine form or the plural, or the feminine plural, okay? But then, when we've got this special structure with first le pronom relatif COD, so what we just saw, this que, before the verb, the rule will be that you will have to put the feminine or the plural or the feminine plural, at the end of your participe passé. So let's have a look first, and it will be quite easy, because it is here. Have a look. C'est l'acteur. Tu as admiré cet acteur. So here, you've got the passé composé form, okay? But then, it's the masculine. So normally, it shouldn't be a problem if we look the sentence. C'est l'acteur que tu as admiré. All right, so we've got this que, pronom relatif, complément d'objet direct. So I told you that if, it, if it's before the verb, at the passé composé form, it can be tricky. But in that case, it's the masculine form, so it doesn't change anything at the end of your participe passé form here. That's the reason why it doesn't change here. If you look carefully, it's the same form. Okay? But if we... Take now the feminine form. C'est l'actrice. Tu as admiré cette actrice. We want to replace actrice. Then we will have c'est l'actrice que. So the structure doesn't change at all. Tu as admiré. The only thing that you will have to put is this e, uh, which is the mark of the feminine, at the end of your participe passé form here. Okay, the good news is that phonetically, here, you don't pronounce it, okay? But in some cases, you will have some participe passé ending with maybe T or something like that. And then if you put the feminine form, you will have to pronounce it, okay? So it's really important to remember that with this kind of structure, when you've got this pronom relatif and then the que complément d'objet direct at the passé composé form, and you've got the feminine form, you will have to add a at the end of your participe passé here. Okay? If we've got the plural, like here, so masculine, but then the plural form, ce sont les acteurs, tu as admiré ces acteurs, okay? So we just don't want to repeat les acteurs. Ce sont les acteurs que tu as admiré, and then have a look here, We've got the mark of the plural, and it's S at the end, okay? So, same thing as usual in French. You don't pronounce it, okay? But it's really important to remember that you should put at the end of your participe passé here, the S, okay? If we have, like here, the feminine plural form, Ce sont les actrices. Tu as admiré ces actrices. Okay. We don't want to repeat les actrices. Then, ce sont les actrices que tu as 
admirer. Okay, so remember here, admirer, well, first you've got this E, uh, mark of the feminine, then you've got this S at the end, mark of the plural, okay? Phonetically, you don't pronounce it, but still remember you've got to put it, okay? E, uh, S. So as I said, you know, for this admirer, adore, all these examples that we've been covering so far, you don't pronounce it. So that's the reason why I wanted to put few sentences in which, well, you'll see that you can see the difference. So the first one, c'est le camion que tu as conduit. Okay, le camion, it's the truck, okay, que tu as conduit. Conduire is to drive, okay, and you've got here the passé composé form. Okay, so in that case, of course, we've been using this pronom relatif, que, okay, and it's complément d'objet direct, all right. It is before the verb tu as conduit here, so normally it does mean that the rule, well, tells us to, 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 to put something at the end of the participe passé, if it's the feminine, or if it's the plural, or feminine plural. In that case, we've got le camion, so we don't put anything at the end of conduit. We just leave conduit like that, okay? But if we put, well, the same sentence, but at the plural. In that case, ce sont les camions que tu as conduit, okay? You will have this S, you don't pronounce it, but it will be here. Now, the feminine. So we take la voiture. The car, okay, la voiture, it's feminine. C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. And that's when you hear the difference between conduit, because remember, final T is not pronounced, conduit, here, and then the feminine, conduite. Okay, so here you can listen to this t, t okay, conduite, right? C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. Okay, and then the same thing for the plural, so it will be feminine plural because it's les voitures. Ce sont les voitures que tu as conduites. All right, so that's the reason why it's quite important to remember this rule, even if in most of the cases you won't pronounce the difference between your participe passé, whether it's at the masculine, the feminine, or the plural form. But in some cases, like, well, these examples, you can hear the difference between, at least here, the masculine and the feminine form, okay? And then the last thing, tricky thing <laughs> with que, is if you put something after and it's not with a vowel, so remember, as usual, in French, when we've got this uh and something after, so a vowel, they don't really get along, so the rule is that you should take uh, away, okay? So it will go like that. So, c'est la boisson que il demande. So normally, if we, if we respect the rule, you know, we should put this que pronoun, okay? But then, as I showed, they don't really get along, as usual, and so que or e uh should disappear. So you get the final structure. C'est la boisson qu'il demande. Now, let's have a look at don, okay? And the important thing with don is that you will use this don instead of complément avec préposition de, all right? So, the important thing here is that, so it should be com a complément, so something that will complete the sentence, so coming after the verb, all right? And then it should be introduced with this préposition de here, all right? So, let's have a look. And, well, as we did previously, so we'll first start with the person, and then after that, in chose, a thing. Voici l'homme. Tout le monde parle de cet homme. Okay, so, voici l'homme. Here is the man. Okay, so, even if it, well, it looks a bit strange to have a short sentence like that, okay? But still, it was for the example, so I thought it might be useful. And then, tout le monde, tout le monde, everybody, everyone, parle, to talk, de cet homme. Okay, so the important thing here is to spot, first, well, of course, we've got the subject here, tout le monde. Then we've got the verb, parler, okay? Then if you look carefully between our 
complement here set on because that's the thing we don't want to repeat and the verb so between them we've got the preposition de okay and it tells us that if we don't want to repeat l'homme okay we will have to use this don pronoun here and the sentence will go like that voici l'homme so the first one doesn't change don so you put here your pronoun relatif then tout le monde parle so you just put back what we've got subject and verb okay it's not really difficult then if we put the same structure but then at the passé composé form voici l'homme tout le monde a parlé de cet homme so same thing we don't want to repeat l'homme okay voici l'homme dont so same position tout le monde a parlé okay so it doesn't change anything you just put it but then well the tense is a uh, is different here because it's passé composé okay so let's see now if we would put the same sentence but then at the future proche so near future normally i tend to put this structure just because it means that you've got two verbs here okay just to see so l'homme is the thing we don't want to repeat so voici l'homme dont tout le monde va parler okay so it doesn't change anything it should be here and then the sentence continues let's see if we want to replace une chose a thing then je n'aime pas le livre nous nous servons de ce livre okay so aimer is to like in that case you've got the negative form je n'aime pas le livre okay nous nous servons okay so in that case i wanted to use this se servir se servir is to use something but it's se servir so it's a reflexive verb okay de ce livre and then you can see that we've got ce livre okay we've got the verb here and between the two we've got the preposition de so it does tell us that if we don't want to repeat le livre we will have to use this pronoun relatif dont so the sentence will be je n'aime sorry i forgot the pas <laughs> je n'aime pas le livre dont nous nous servons all right so remember you should put the pas <laughs> i forgot to write it sorry je n'aime pas le livre dont nous nous servons okay and then ou okay the last one for this lesson ou well you've got two options whether you will use this ou to replace what we call complément de lieu lieu is a place okay or then you will use it to replace un complément de temps okay temps time let's see first if we want to replace complément de lieu okay so je vous présente la ville je suis né dans cette ville okay so je vous présente présenter to present la ville la ville is the town je suis né i was born dans cette ville okay so in that case well have a look you've got cette ville and la ville so probably that's the thing we don't want to repeat okay and then here we get dans so it's in okay so you know that it's a place all right so it's what we could call or what we call complément de lieu so it's a place all right so if you want to avoid repeating la ville then you will have to use this ou pronom and the sentence will go like that je vous présente la ville okay so your first sentence doesn't change at all ou so you put your pronom here and then je suis né the rest continue okay like that okay and then let's have another another situation when we want to replace a complément de temps okay so it's not it will it won't be a place but it will be something with the time so ou c'est l'année okay and it's year c'est l'année il a fait très froid cette année okay so you can see here well you've got the, this passé composé form okay faire froid when it's cold okay so it was cold or cette année and then well obviously we don't want to repeat année because it's here and it's here okay and in that case well 
you tend to use set an age just to indicate the time or when it was, okay? So, c'est l'année où il a fait très froid. All right, so, quite simple. First part doesn't change. Then you put your pronoun où, then the sentence continues like that. Il a fait très froid. All right? few other examples for this time concept because normally obviously in many cases people tend to think that ou it's only for a place so that's the reason why I thought it might be useful to give you a few examples just to, to see uh, how to use it so the first one for instance c'est le jour, le jour de day, c'est le jour où elle est venue okay, venir is to come, c'est le jour où elle est venue Second example, ils arrivent le jour où tu seras absente. Ok, arriver to arrive, sera, so remember, it's the verb être, to be, ok, but it's the, f uh, the future form. Tu seras absente, absente, you won't be here. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir, le moment, the time. Où le bébé, the baby, va dormir, is going to sleep. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir. Ok? So, I know it was long, but it was quite important. So, if you're not really sure about the use, don't be afraid to watch the video one more time. If you want more videos, then the YouTube channel is here, youtube.com slash imagier, and then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day! Les structures avec deux pronoms, and especially when one of them, so one of the pronouns, when you, you will use two pronouns, and one of them will be en, okay, so it was introduced in a previous uh, video lesson, okay, so we'll work on this lesson, in this lesson on the pronoun en, okay, and then next lesson will be with le, la, le, the lesson after lui, leur, and the last lesson regarding this topic with to pronounce will be with the pronoun i. Okay, so let's see now with en. So, me or them m apostrophe, te, the apostrophe, or then lui, se or s apostrophe, nous, vous, leur, and se or s apostrophe will be placed before en. Okay, so that's the rule. En will come after me or m apostrophe, te or t apostrophe, lui, se or s apostrophe, nous, vous, leur or se or s apostrophe. Okay, so that's the way it will go. So en is coming after. Okay, so we'll see a few examples, and then I thought it might be useful to put well the examples at the present form, so le présent, and then passé composé, because if you remember correctly, this uh, passé composé is uh, what we call a composed tense, and then the futur proche, so this near future structure that we've got, and uh, normally you you make it with the verb aller and then your verb at the infinitive and it's quite interesting because in that case well it gives you two verbs okay so the question is how do you put your pronouns when you've got two verbs in your sentence okay so let's see now the present mon ami me donne un conseil all right so mon ami my friend me donne donne is to give un conseil and advice okay so let's say that we would like to replace un conseil in that case and then we saw in the previous lesson that un conseil could be replaced with en okay and so mon ami me so it should be before if you remember what we saw previously so me should be in the first position and then en should come right after and then the verb, all right? But then if you remember, we've got this e uh, here, so me, and then en is starting with the vowel as well, so e uh, should go away. That's the reason why you will have this m apostrophe, so m'en donne un, all right? Second example, ta femme t'achète une montre. Ta femme, your wife, achete is to, to buy une montre, a watch. Okay, and then of course we would like to replace une montre in that case. We will use this en pronoun. Okay, and you get ta femme, 
So you've got this T again, but then as it's with the vowel here, en, then E uh, needs to go away. Tan achète une. All right, so as we saw for the rule, first we've got T, after that en is coming, and then we've got the verb. Okay, then il nous apporte des fruits. Okay, so remember, apporter is to bring the fruit fruits. Okay, in that case, we would like to replace the fruit, and so we will replace it with the pronoun en. Okay, il nous en apporte. All right, so nous first, then your pronoun en, then the verb. Okay, so let's see now with the passé composé. So same sentence, mon ami m'a donné un conseil, all right, mon ami m'en a donné un. So it will be exactly the same thing, especially if you think that a donné, the thing that you see here, okay, it's only one verb, okay, so you've got two parts because it's composed, all right, so first you've got avoir and then you've got this participe, passé form, okay, but it's only one verb, all right, that's the reason why you put first your pronoun here, me, and then you put this second pronoun en before avoir, okay, because this is the verb here. So you get mon ami m'en a donné un. Let's see now the same sentence that we had previously, but at the passé composé form. Ta femme t'a acheté une montre, okay, so same thing here. Ta femme. So, te should be here, but then, of course, with the vowel, you, we take away the e. En a acheté une. Ta femme t'en a acheté une. All right. And then, ils nous ont apporté des fruits. All right. Same thing. Ils nous en ont apporté. All right. So, nous first, then en. And after that, you put your verb, so same rule here, it's composed, so you get two parts, but still it's only one verb here. So let's read it. Il nous en, okay, beautiful liaison here, <laughs> ont apporté, okay, so the full thing goes like, il nous en ont apporté. All right, so let's read it one more time. Mon ami m'en a donné un, ta femme t'en a acheté une, ils nous en ont apporté. All right, and then the last example we'll see with the future part. So in that case, it will be quite interesting because we will have two verbs. Okay, so let's see. Mon ami va me donner un conseil. Okay, so exactly the same idea. We'll replace un conseil by en, and then we see how it goes. Mon ami va, all right, so here you've got this verb aller. All right, so the first verb here. And then you will put your pronouns. So, me here, of course, o is going away. Then you've got your pronoun en before the second verb. Okay, donné to give. That's the second verb here. Infinitive form, as usual in French, when we've got two verbs. So, mon ami va m'en donner un. All right. Ta femme va t'acheter une monstre. Exactly the same rule, ta femme va, so you've got first your verb here, then te, but then e is going away, en, and the second verb, acheter une. All right. Ils vont nous apporter des fruits, ils vont nous en apporter. Okay, so that's the only thing that you should remember. So when you've got one verb, whether it's simple or composed, then it is before the verb. When you've got two verbs like here, so with this first aller, then your verb, so donner here, remember that your pronouns will come before the second verb, okay? But then the order will stay the same. Les structures avec deux pronoms, and uh, if we are more precise, uh, if you've got one of these two pronouns, if it is le, la, or les, okay? So, we saw in the previous video the same concept, so when you've got two pronouns in the same sentence, but then one of them is en, okay? So, if you want to check it, then it is the previous uh, video, and then after that we'll see lui, leur, and we'll finally we'll work with 
Y. Okay. But then in that video, we'll work on le, la, ou les. Okay. And then the rule is quite simple. If you've got first me, te, nous, vous, they will come first, and after that, you will put le, la, and les. Okay. That's the rule. If you've got le, la, and then les, it will come all the time after me, te, nous, and vous. Okay, let's see that more precisely. And so we'll work on présent, passé composé, because it's a composed tense, so it's quite interesting to see how you put this pronounce when you've got a composed tense. And then the futur proche, so this near future, so I am going to like in, in English, so aller plus infinitif, okay? It's interesting because in that case you've got two verbs, so we'll see how you put your pronouns when you've got the structure, the sentence, with two verbs, okay? So let's start now with the présent. So, mon père me conseille ce livre. Mon père, my father, conseille to uh, advise or to recommend, in that case, ce livre, this book. So, we want to replace ce livre. We will put le. Okay, and as we saw for the rule, so, mon père, first me, then le, and after that, the word, uh, the verb, sorry. Mon père me le conseille. Okay, that's it. Quite simple, remember. Me first, then le, and then the verb. Second example. Tes amis, your friends, donnez to give, les clés, the keys. Okay? Tes amis nous donnent les clés. So, we want to replace les clés, so we should replace it with the plural form. So, it's les, okay, here, les. And then remember, first nous, then les, and after that the verb. Tes amis nous les donnent. Okay? And the final example. Je me réserve. Okay, so réserver to reserve. La place de parking. So the parking place. La place de parking. In that case, we don't want to use la place de parking. We want to replace it with a pronoun. So, je me la réserve. Okay, remember. First me, then la, and after that your verb. Okay, so it's quite simple. It's not really difficult. Remember, uh, in that case, me, nous, me, here in the first place, then le, la for the feminine, les for the plural, second place, then the verb. Let's see how it will go with the passé composé form. So, passé composé, as you can see it in its name, it's a composed tense. Okay, so you've got two parts. First, you've got avoir, then you've got here participe passé. Okay, so, mon père m'a conseillé ce livre. Same thing, we don't want to use ce livre again, so we put the pronoun. Okay, so in that case, if you look carefully, then mon père me first place, then you should have le here, because it's the masculine form, but then you've got here a vowel after, so e uh, needs to go away, so you get l apostrophe. Mon père me l'a conseillé. All right? Then, tes amis nous ont donné les clés. So, exactly the same sentence that we had previously at the present form, but in that case, it's the passé composé form, okay? Tes amis nous les ont donné. Okay? So, same rule. First, nous, then les, before, and then after that, you put the verb here. So, you can see that I've been putting in red the ending here, just to... Uh, remind you or uh, yeah, let you remember that we've got a rule in French. Normally when we make this passé composé form with avoir like that and if you've got what we call complément d'objet direct before, you should put at the end of your participe passé form here feminine if the word is feminine, so a, s if the word is Plural, okay. In that case, we've got les clés. Les clés is feminine plural, so that's the reason why we will add first feminine and then plural here. Okay, so the good news is that you don't pronounce it. So, donner, okay. So, whether it would be without this final es or with 
e s you will pronounce it the same way tes amis nous les ont donnés ok and then the last one je me suis réservé la place de parking je me first then la and after that suis réservé Okay, so it doesn't really change that much if you think first me or then nous as we saw, then le or then la and les, and after that you put your verb, even if in that case it's a composed verb, it doesn't change anything, you just put it before. Okay, so let's see now how it will work with future proche, so structure with two verbs. So, same example, mon père va me conseiller ce livre. And now you can see something interesting. You can see that me and le will be placed before the second verb. Okay? So, mon père va, so you put first your verb, me le conseiller. Alright? So, keep in mind that me and le should be before the second verb. Tes amis vont nous donner les clés. Tes amis vont nous les donner. Je vais me réserver la place de parking. Je vais me la réserver. All right, so the rule goes like that. Me, nous, me. So as here, we saw first place, then le, la, les, second place. All right, and after that, your second verb. Le présent. Continue. So the present continue, it's an uh, interesting structure because it's uh, the kind of structure that you can use if you want to insist on the fact that an action or something, a process is continuing at the time when you are uh, speaking or talking. Okay. And the way to construct this is to use first this expression, être en train de, so you can see that here we've got the verb, être, to be. Okay, and this structure should be obviously at the present time. Okay, and the no, not the present time, sorry, but the present tense. All right, so you should conjugate your verb at here at the present. Okay, then you will put the verb that you want to use in your structure. This verb should be at the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, so and it will give you this present continue. Okay, so let's see a few examples. First, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. Okay, faire is to do, and then mes devoirs, my homework. All right, and then when you when you use this, je suis en train de. Okay, so you want to insist on the fact that at the time when you are talking, the the, the process is taking place. Okay, and it it continues, and that's the whole concept of it. So, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. All right. Second example that we've got. So same thing here. Tu es en train de regarder un film. Okay. So same thing. Regarder or to watch a film, a movie. So the action is taking place, and of course it continues if you use this en train de. Okay. But then remember that you've got to put here the verb être at the present form for tu tu es. Okay. So you need to conjugate it, and then elle est en train de réparer, so to repair, son vélo, her bike. Elle est en train de réparer son vélo. All right, so same thing, it's continuing, it's taking place at the time when you are talking. And the last one, il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Préparer, to prepare, le petit déjeuner, breakfast. Okay, so il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so at the time when we are talking, he's doing it right now, and the process is continuing. Okay, so let's read them one more time. Je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu es en train de regarder un film. Elle est en train de réparer son vélo. Il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so that's what we call le présent continu. But then if you think about that... Well, it would be possible to transpose that at the past as well. Why not? So, let's call it le passé continue. And it's possible because, well, the idea is that you just use the same, same structure, être en train de, okay? But think about that because we've been covering the past tenses already, and it would be a bit strange to use 
this passé composé tense because normally we tend to use this passé composé when we want to express actions, okay? But then in that case, imparfait would be more appropriate, okay? So if you want to use this passé continu concept, then use être en train de and you use this imparfait, okay? Then same idea, you put your verb at the infinitive form and you will get this passé continu. Okay, so you know what? We'll take exactly the same sentences that we had uh, as examples for the, the present, but we just put them at the passé. And here we go. J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. So as you can see, the only thing that will change in this structure is être, okay, because in that case you should put it at the imparfait form. J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu étais en train de regarder un film. Elle était en train de réparer son vélo. Il était en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. All right. So, the only thing that will change here, here and here, it's the verb être that you should put at the imparfait form. All right. And in the same logic, we could put this structure at the future as well. Why not? So, le futur continue. And in that case, exactly the same structure. So, être en train de, but then obviously, so être should be at the future form. Okay, so the real one. And then the infinitive form just to get this future continue. Okay, same example, same sentences. So, je serai en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu seras en train de regarder un film. Elle sera en train de réparer son vélo. Il sera en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so as you can see, the only thing that will change here is the verb être. So it should be at the future, future simple form. So the real future. Okay, here, here and here. Okay, le passé récent, like the recent past, if you want to translate it directly. So le passé récent is a, like a false or a fake tense that we've got, because technically it's the present tense, but then if you want to express something that you just did, okay, so we've got a tense for that and it's quite useful and quite easy to make because the concept is that first, you will use the verb venir and the preposition de. Okay, so venir is to come. Venir de. So this should be at the present tense. And then you will put your verb at the infinitive form. Okay, and you will get what we call le passé récent. Okay, so it's a technique just to express something yet that you just did. Okay, uh, so it's not possible to use this passé récent, of course, for last week or uh, uh, the month before, it's not possible. Okay, so it's really something that is somehow connected to the present. So present, something that you just did. Okay, so of course, if you want to make it, you should know the conjugation of venir by heart. If that's not the case, then don't worry, here it comes. So at the present tense, it's je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right, so let's see that one more time. Je viens. Final S not pronounced, okay? And when you combine this EON, you get this YEN, YEN. Je viens, all right? Tu viens, well, exactly the same thing. Final S not pronounced, and then you get this YEN sound, all right? Then IL VIENT, exactly the same sound, because final T here is not pronounced. ELLE VIENT, all right? NOUS VENONS, okay? So final S not pronounced, and then remember that you pronounce this E, uh, like a the, the non, okay, O-N in your nose, on, 
venons, nous venons. All right? Vous venez. Okay, so a Z at the end combine will give you the sound E. And here you get a venez. Vous venez. All right? And then il vienne. So remember, as usual in French, when we talk about conjugation, E N T at the end you don't pronounce it here. And then you get this E uh, here followed by this double N. So double consonant here, so when they are identical, they will open the sound of this E. Uh. So you will get it and it will be produced like E. Okay? So vienne. Vienne. Okay? Don't insist on this. Ne. No. Vienne. Vienne. Okay? Ils viennent. Elles viennent. Alright? So remember, je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. Nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. So this is the first part that you should use to make this passé récent. Okay? And remember, after that, you put this preposition de plus your verb at the infinitive. So let's see a few examples now. And the first one, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay? Discuter to discuss avec with my sister, ma sœur. Je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay? Something that just happened. All right? And then same thing here. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Un, uh, sorry, boire to drink un verre glace de lait of milk. D'accord? Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Same thing here. It just happened. Elle vient de gagner le match. Gagner is to win. Le match, obviously, the match. Elle vient de gagner le match. And the last one. Nous venons de déjeuner. Okay? Déjeuner here. So when you have your lunch, okay? Nous venons de déjeuner. Alright? So, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Elle vient de gagner le match. Nous venons de déjeuner. All right. So keep in mind, venir at the present form, as we see here, and then the preposition, la préposition de, and your verb at the infinitive form. And then you get this passé récent, something that you just did. Okay? Le futur. Proche. So if you want to translate this future proche directly, it would be like the near future. So technically, it is uh, one way that we've got to express the future, but then we keep a structure that is conjugated at the present tense. Okay? And so to make it, we'll see it right now, first we need to use the verb aller. Aller is to go. Okay? And well, this verb aller should be at the present tense. Then you will put your verb. Your verb should be at the infinitive, so the basic form of the verb. Then you will get this future proche structure. Okay? So it is like, like in English, for instance, when you say I am going to something, that exactly, it is exactly the same structure. Okay? Express something that you want to do or you are going to do. Okay? But still, it will be at the present tense. Okay, so the the only thing that really you should remember and know by heart is the verb aller at the present tense. If you don't remember it, well, don't worry. It is coming right now. Je vais. Tu vas. Il va. Elle va. Nous allons. Vous allez. Ils vont, elles vont. Okay, so this is the verb aller at the present tense. Okay, let's see it one more time. Je vais, final S not pronounced here, and remember when you combine this A and E together, you get the sound E, so really open. Je vais. Tu vas, final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il va, elle va. Nous Allons. Remember, final S not pronounced. O and together, it's on. 
and then we'll make this little link between the two, what we call the liaison, nous allons, okay? Then, vous allez, remember, a Z at the end here will give you this A sound, okay? Allez, and then, as previously, this little link between the two, liaison, vous allez, right? Then, ils vont, final T, not pronounced, and then O and together, on vont, okay? Ils vont, elles vont, alright? So, one more time, je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. Okay, so that's the only thing that really you should modify or conjugate because after that you will put your verb at the infinitive form. So let's see a few examples now. And the first one, je vais sortir ce soir. Sortir is to go out ce soir this evening. Okay, so I am going to go out, it sounds strange in English, this evening. Okay, in French, well it's well quite possible here. Je vais sortir ce soir. Then, elle va apporter un gâteau. Apporter is to bring un gâteau, a cake. Elle va apporter un gâteau. Okay, and after that, nous allons faire du café. Faire is to do, or in that case it could be to prepare. Du café, some coffee. Nous allons faire du café. Okay, vous allez partir en vacances. Partir is to go. En vacances, on vacation, and here you can see that at the end, we've got this point d'interrogation, so it means that it's a question, and if it's a question, we should raise the voice a little bit at the end. So let's repeat it. Vous allez partir en vacances? Okay, so I tend to insist a little bit, but still, that's the idea. You should raise your voice a little bit at the end, just to inform the person that it's a question, okay? Vous allez partir en vacances? Vous allez partir en vacances. Ok, so you can hear it. First, je vais sortir ce soir. Then, elle va apporter un gâteau. Nous allons faire du café. Vous allez partir en vacances. 